the Duke and Duchess of Sussex have split from the royal family and started up a new life in the U.S. They have founded their new charitable venture, Archwell Foundation, and signed deals with Netflix and Spotify, resulting in Archwell Productions and Archwell Audio. They were also campaign chairs of the hugely successful Vax Live, which raised millions for equitable vaccine distribution, and Harry has created a series on Apple TV Plus with Oprah Winfrey about mental health entitled, The Me You Can't See. While all this will be very exciting for the couple, it has been argued that Meghan could have followed her passions within the royal family too if she had been patient. Meghan has been a lifelong campaigner on women's rights and was even a UN women advocate for political participation and leadership. She has indicated that she is keen to keep pursuing this passion going forward, and likely could have done so within the royal structure. Pod Save the Queen host and Gripper interviewed columnist Darren Lewis on Facebook Live about Meghan and Harry's royal journey and where it all went wrong. Ms. Gripper expressed during their chat that she thought it was a great shame the Sussexes left, especially because she believes Meghan could have done all the work she wanted to, for example in the area of girls' rights and education, had she stayed a working royal. She acknowledged that she may not have been able to do it all immediately, but it would have been open for her, as evidenced by Sophie, Countess of Wessex, working on those issues now. Ms. Gripper said, I think a lot of the things Meghan maybe thought she couldn't do or wouldn't be allowed to do in her royal role, I think she could have done them. She might not have been able to do them immediately but in terms of speaking up for girls' rights or girls' education or girls around the world having rights to particular things and access to all of those things, I totally think she could have done that. We see Sophie Wessex is taking up a lot of those batons and running forward with them. However, she acknowledged that, either way, Meghan may not have been happy with her personal life even if she was enjoying the work and found that fulfilling. She said, but it's all very well having a job that is fulfilling, but if your life and your family life and your home life isn't fulfilling, that is ultimately what makes you happy. A job, even if it is a royal job, is just a job. Mr. Lewis agreed that Meghan could well have done all of those things in her work, but the problem was what was going on behind closed doors. He said he believes the public saw a glimpse of that when Meghan was describing how she felt unsupported by the royal family with her mental health struggles. He noted that there were also unsavory elements, such as the accusations of racist comments made by a member of the royal family. All in all, he argued that there were many problems that went beyond what their role was. Going forward, it looks like Harry plans to very much focus on his work around mental health. He has also continued his sustainable tourism initiative, Travelist, producing a report earlier this year on how to build back the industry better post-COVID. Meanwhile, Meghan has taken slightly more of a back seat during her pregnancy, presumably to focus on her health. The couple are expecting their second child, a girl, in the summer. However, she has spoken out on how the pandemic has disproportionately affected women in a pre-recorded video that was played at Vax Live. Women and girls' rights will likely continue to be a staple of her work for years to come.